we don't think of these questions, but the last time a Kansas State Wildcat football team had a shutout. It's been a while. It's not easy to come by in the Big A. You don't get a lot of shutouts in the Big A. Kansas State has been down uh, the last few years. I will say it's sometime probably 1979, 1980, That's 81. not bad. That's not bad. And very diplomatically put, I would say. Ni 1975, the last time Kansas State football team shut out an opponent. They came close, though, in their first game of the season this year as Kansas State beat Western Illinois last Saturday in Manhattan. Let's take a look. of Western Illinois dropped in to pay a visit to the Wildcats of Kansas State on a beautiful Manhattan afternoon. The hometown heroes got their offense going in the first quarter behind quarterback Carl Straw. A third and 13 call from their own 17 produced a 24-yard gain when Straw found Michael Smith for the reception. Eric Gallon single back behind Straw. Back to throw is strong, now out rushing outside the pocket, needs a block. Pump fakes now throws, ball is tipped and caught by Al Jones in Western Illinois territory at the 43. Then the two found each other once again. This time a 14-yard gainer, and the Wildcats were at the Leatherneck 19-yard line. It then came to a gutsy fourth and one call by Kansas State head coach Bill Snyder. But it worked out as Straw on the keeper went in from the one, and Kansas State took a 7 to nothing lead. Western Illinois became their own worst enemy when they fumbled the ball on their own 11-yard line, and it was recovered by Kansas State's Elijah Alexander, and the Cats had the ball first and goal at the Western Illinois 8. It took just two plays from there before Straw hit Pat Jackson from six yards out, and the Wildcats of Kansas State held a 14 to nothing lead. The Leathernecks finally got some offense going, and they had first and goal on the 11-yard line. But Roger A. Green comes up with a big play, getting the interception, but he lost the handle on the ball. Luckily, Danny Needham was there for the recovery, and the Cats dodged a bullet and took a 14 to nothing lead into halftime. In the second half, Paul Watson came on in relief of straw and picked up right where he left off. Back to throw is Watson, short drop, throwing left, has him in, Hernandez at the 10, makes a move. Inside the 10, Frank gets gang tackled down at the seven yard line. First and 10 on the Leatherneck 20. Watson finds Frank Hernandez for the 13 yard pickup and the Cats are right back in the Western Illinois backyard. Three plays later, Watson calls his own number and sneaks over from one yard out and KSU held a 21 to nothing lead. The Cats haven't found themselves in this position very often and wanted to take full advantage of it. So Watson went right to the air, hooking up with Hernandez again. This time on a 44 yard scoring pass and the Wildcats ran away this afternoon, winning for just the fifth time since 1984, downing Western Illinois 27 to six. So Kansas State gets a big victory to start the year, and uh, I kind of like those receivers. I'm a bit partial, I must admit, but Frank Hernandez and Michael Smith, each with over 100 yards of receiving, first time ever in Kansas State football history. That's uh, to be congratulated. Yeah, Bill Snyder, you have to be uh, satisfied getting the first victory of the year, the first game of the year. It's been uh, few and far between for Kansas State to get off on the right foot. Speaking of uh, getting off on the right foot, that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you the offensive and defensive players of the week next, and also uh, Dave's favorite favorite segment, the hit of the week. I like that. When we come back. <laughs> to the Big 8 Gridiron Report. I'm Dave Logan along with Drew Goodman and time now for the offensive and defensive players of the week. We have a, a three-team panel here. Our producer Sam Allen and we vote and 
uh, unanimously we've uh, decided that this week, at least the Offensive Player of the Week, is a guy by the name of Blaze Bryant. Blaze Bryant of Iowa State, a great running back, a guy that, as I mentioned, from Huntington Beach, California. He scored four times to tie a school record for rushing touchdowns and points. He also had three receptions for 38 yards. Bryant scored on runs of 1, 3, 3, and 15 yards. And it was the eighth time that he had passed the 100-yard mark in his 12 career starts. His fourth best individual performance, 177 yards and 36 carries for Blaze Bryant as the Cyclones beat Northern Iowa 35-6 Saturday in Ames. The Defensive Player of the Week in the Big Eight this week goes to a University of Kansas sophomore, Dana Stubblefield, a defensive tackle who goes 6'4 and 305 pounds. Big fella. He had seven tackles, five unassisted, four behind the line of scrimmage, including three sacks, three of the nine sacks Kansas had against Oregon State in the big 38-12 win for KU. Stubblefield said his motivation came from the opposition. Their players are calling me slow during the first quarter. They shut their mouths after the second sack. We got after him. The Defensive Player of the Week from Ohio, Dana Stubblefield, a sophomore from the University of Kansas. Time now for the hit of the week. We're going to do this each and every week and uh, go through all of the uh, film and find out the one guy that almost gets knocked out. And we found him <laughs> this week down in Gainesville, Florida. He was, he was a receiver, Dave. Yes, he was a wide receiver. I hate to see that. But Oklahoma State, of course, struggled against the University of Florida. But Mike Clark, what a hit this is as he really arrives just about the time of the football. And Mike Clark from Oklahoma State is the recipient of the award, the player, the hit of the week. Look like you lived that a uh, bit vicariously there. Oh, you hate to see defensive backs come on like that. Go to our play of the week and we'll let Dave rest for a moment. The play of the week in Columbia, Missouri. Missouri wanted to get off on the right foot and sure enough they did. Kent Kiefer goes back to pass and he looks deep to his favorite target, Lindsey Collins. 68 yards, Collins high steps, not quite like Deion Sanders, but high steps into the end zone. 68 yards and a touchdown and Missouri up a 7 to nothing against Texas Christian. Now I like to see that, those wide receivers that can run and Lindsey Collins is one of them. Yeah, certainly. Deion did too much high step. <laughs> Just a little bit. We'll come back. We've got the predictions. And, of course, you don't want to miss that. So stay with us on the Big 8 Gridiron Report. Welcome back to the Big 8 Gridiron Report, the infamous prediction segment is about to take place. And if you watched the show last year, you know that I didn't fare too well predicting what would happen with Big 8 teams. But I did pay off my dinner to Drew, and I intend to have a better year this year. Somebody had dinner in Miami with you, Dave. I am not sure if I was there, as I recollect. Terrific dinner, too. I Let believe. Me tell you. Yeah, I'm sure it was delightful. We'll start with Iowa State at Minnesota. The uh, Cyclones looking for their second consecutive victory. You talk about losing a heartbreaker. Minnesota, if I can go off yeah, on a tangent terrible. for a moment, tied with the University of Utah this past week. A few seconds left. They're kicking the winning field goal. A short job. It's blocked and returned the That's other way. That's a mm. tough way to lose. In any event, now that we're done with that thought, I like Iowa State. I like Iowa State as well, so we agree on the first one. New Mexico State at uh, Kansas State in Manhattan. Going to allow me. I like sure. the Wildcats. I think uh, Bill Snyder's got that team revved up. Good passing game, and uh, I think they, too, will have their second consecutive victory. Mark it down. 2-0, and oh, the Kansas State Wildcats. All right. Northern Iowa visits Stillwater, Oklahoma, and the Cowboys trying to bounce back from a thrashing in Gainesville. I think they will. Uh, I think Oklahoma State will get the W against Northern Iowa. Yep, I like Pat Jones' crew here, too, so we agree on the first three games. Big game. National television game. Colorado against Illinois. You remember last year when these two teams got together, Illinois embarrassed. Jeff George loses 38-7, to and uh, they've been talking back and forth. I think John Makovic said uh, if this was not a sellout, he was going door to door to make sure that they had enough people in the stadium. Very, very tough game for Colorado. However... I like the Buffalo's chances in Champaign. Well, Colorado will have to play a whole lot better than they did Thursday night yep. against uh, Stanford, but uh, I like the Buffaloes also. 
we we're can't we can't do, we can't do this way too much. All right, how about Kansas at Louisville? Howard Schnellenberger. He's there. Yes, he is there. Louisville, Kansas. I like Kansas. I like Glenn Mason to go two and one. I would hope Kansas could win, but I like Louisville in this case. I think uh, Louisville's got a pretty good football team this year, so we finally differ. Utah State at Missouri. Missouri will get that uh, first win of the season against Utah State. Trust me, Dave. I like Missouri pick, pick very Utah much. State. Very pick much. Utah State. Pick I like Utah Missouri State. very much. And finally, maybe the game of the of the week in terms of uh, competitiveness, Pittsburgh, the Panthers visit Norman, Oklahoma. That should be a dandy. They have a new coach. Pittsburgh does. Offensive genius, as they Paul say. Hackett. Paul Hackett, certainly. Uh, I like OU. Make mine OU, too. We only differed on one, Dave. Hey, plenty of See, weeks you understand what he's doing. It's quite apparent. He's going to piggyback with me on the entire season and uh, hopefully get a push at the end of the year, and he won't have to pay off his debt. Say good night. Okay. For Dave Logan, I'm Drew Goodman. We'll see you next week on the Big 8 Gridiron Report.